Who want one last trip to the long trail? Throughout the marketing campaign of Tekken 8, once they started to release trailers for every single character, me as a person who's trying to create content and be a content creator, I felt like a necessity for me to cover every single gameplay trailer and talk about the goods, the bads, the news, the olds. And eventually, kind of towards the tail end of it, I felt like, nah. I don't want to do this. I don't want to talk about these trailers and pretend to know all this interesting, you know, gameplay lore about these characters. Oh, this is two frames. Oh, this is new. Like, I just felt like one, I didn't really have that kind of knowledge. And then two, I felt like it was very repetitive. The trailers in Tekken 8, they have a very similar flow from one another and they don't really do anything different. So lately I've been skipping out on a whole do a reaction, do a breakdown of gameplay trailers because I just don't find it to be interesting. And I was playing on doing the same thing for Lydia's trailer until players start to speak up about this new mechanic that she has and I wonder what is it actually now throughout this whole trailer she's she's doing crazy stuff like if you really look at the gameplay she is doing the most bizarre stuff possible and I really don't want to go down the whole path of like pay to win DLC again because we dealt with a lot of that in Tekken 7 Eddie in Tekken 8 wasn't really pay to win too much he's annoying but he's not broken Lydia she seems like she's going to be annoying and broken pay to win DLC is back but that's not the part that I want to focus on. The part that I want to focus is this moment here. Reyna and Lydia are facing off. Reyna starts to go in with this string that's very, very annoying. And then right here, she winds up for this power crush move. Um, I don't know. Is this move a high? I can't remember if this move's a high or a mid, but basically it's very annoying. Oh, oh, on a side note. So for people who get blown up by stuff like this, what I do is I block the power crush and then I grab them for the counter hit throw. I think Hamron, he has this move where he can power crush and he can kick you. Soon as you see the power crush, grab him. I think grabbing players is a perfect way to break power crushing. I want everyone watching this to practice grabbing after someone spams a power crush if you can punish it or if you're getting blown up by it. Me personally, I just think that's a good way to deal with it. Okay, but let's focus. So in this moment, she's power crushing Lydia. Lydia, she does this weird, like this move is so fast. Look at that. See, this is what I, okay, I'm really not, I'm trying to not go on a rant about pay to win DLC, but the thing about Lydia that always annoyed me is how fast she is. Frame Whisper did an excellent video probably like two or three years ago where he talked about it. And as you can tell, I'm not able to block right here. I do my string as fast as I can, I'm spamming it out, but Elisa is going to eat that hit every single time. Uh, let's go to another character that has something similar. Okay, I'm not able to block. Right, let's look at one more character just to show you that I'm not cherry picking this. I've gone through the entire roster more or less after doing my uh, string. Doesn't work, right? There you go. So this is good recovery speed in action, right? This is something that players really weren't paying attention to before characters like her existed. So much, they move so fast and they also recover so fast and it allows you to not be able to punish them. She was a character who embodied that a lot. Like if you think about this, Reyna is already, think about this, Reyna is already attacking in this moment. And before Reyna can get out this power crush, Lydia hits her with this move that breaks through her power crush. And it has this special animation where it kind of like breaks through her power crush. Now, this is where we turn to the discussion of today's video. And we ask, in this instance, what is Lydia doing. Someone on the Tekken subreddit, they gave this move a name and they called it a armor breaker. And I think that idea is so interesting. You have many characters in Tekken 8 who have moves that's armored, highs, tracking, activate heat, it's hard to whiff punish, even if you've seen in combo breaker. Farzine was using Victor's high armor attack and he was mopping up the competition. Very few people were able to counter that move. Now the developers said in June, which is like right around the corner, they are introducing a defense update to the game. And I was looking at this armored breaker as the person on the Tekken subreddit said, is this something that they're going to give to 
every character or is this only a Lydia thing? When they talk about here at the bottom where it says, um, adjustments plan to alleviate category three and enhance the value of players defense technique by incorporating lateral movement strategies. So this is talking about sidestepping and adjustments to the battle system, such as throws, heat dash, heat burst, etc. Now, even though it doesn't talk about power crushing, that is also a very important part of heat in general, because a lot of characters, that's how they go into heat. And I wonder if they really did decide to add a new mechanic into the game that not only Lydia has, but kind of every character has where they can break through a power crush, how would the player base feel about that? I personally would love to experiment with something like that, but I wouldn't want it to be set in stone. Here's the thing about Tekken, right? Tekken 7, they added a lot of moves. They added wall splash, they added the wall stun, they gave a lot of characters new moves, but a lot of that stuff was cool, but there was some of it that was very yucky. And we was stuck with it throughout the entirety of Tekken 7's lifespan. We never can go back. And I look at the move that Lydia is doing here and I just wonder what impact will it have down the road? How will this really affect the entire game? This character just from the trailer alone is shaping up to be a monster. If we pay attention to what number three specifies, it says situations where one player dominates the attack making it difficult to utilize defensive techniques. Now here's something that I also said as well, right? This game was built around offense. The developers from the ground up made this game so you can attack. We saw this play out in Combo Breaker as well, where Nii was playing kind of this passive Tekken 7, this looking for counter hit style, um, and Arslan was playing this very fast, aggressive style, and Nii just got blown out of the water. I think that matchup perfectly shows how people used to play Tekken 7 and how people play Tekken 8. So even when they say they're adding defense into the game, I don't think it's gonna be the defense that we're expecting. I don't think they're gonna slow down the gameplay. I don't think they're going to make everything punishable, nerf heat, nerf that. I am simply wondering, is this what they're going to do? The best defense is offense style of buffing, where a character is being overwhelmed by pressure and then boom, all of a sudden, I don't know if you spend heat, I don't know if you have a stack that you're building up, but you can break through the opponent's attack. Maybe not even power crush. Maybe this was just utilized on a power crush so we can see how effective it is. But imagine if every character had this tool where, you, where someone is attacking and you can break through whatever they're doing. I wonder what this truly means in terms of gameplay. And when I seen the, the Redditor say armor breaker, my mind immediately started racing because one, is this only for Lydia? Two, will every character get this? And three, what happens if you do this on a move that's not armored? If it can break through armor, it can break through anything. What is the developers alluding to with this attack? Is this a new era of Tekken 8 where the best way to play defense is by offense, breaking through your opponent's attack and starting off offense of your own? I think that's more in line with what Tekken 8 will do instead of adding in traditional offense tools like we're expecting. One thing that I was trying to emphasize to players as well when we read this little uh, patch note thing is that they made this game from the ground up for offense and I don't see them going back to what Tekken 7 did. When they say they want to enhance the value of player defensive techniques, we really don't know what that means until we see it. This next update is going to be incredible for that reason. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one and bye bye.